Great. Okay, we are live. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, my name is David Brooks and I'm co-founder of and search marketing consultant to doctor.com. And I'm joined today by Carlene Siebel, who's the CEO of Derm Spectra. The goal of today's presentation is to provide you with some insights into how you can make your practice stand out in a crowded marketplace. We'll first speak about your online reputation and how patients see you based on your digital presence. Carlene will then talk about how you can differentiate your practice with medical technology. She'll speak specifically about how practices are using the Derm Spectra system to attract a wider audience of patients and provide greater revenue per patient. But first, a brief word from our sponsors. Doctor.com is the leader in healthcare marketing automation, software, and services for reputation management and new patient acquisition. We only work for physicians, so we're uniquely qualified to work on local business marketing issues for modern medical practices. We offer three very unique solutions. A convenient central platform that lets you manage your practice's business listings on more than 60 different local business and doctor directory sites. We have a content network comprising the top healthcare websites that collectively reach 30 million patients each month. Finally, we offer a unique in-office laptop computer, the Review Hub, that makes it simple, fast, and easy to collect reviews from real patients. And we publish those reviews on our own network. Carlene? Hi, I'm Carlene Siebold. I just wanted to introduce Germ Spectra just briefly here in the beginning. Uh, Germ Spectra is a total body digital skin imaging system. It's also an image management system that has a secure database to store those full body images. And it has an application to view those images over time. Our company was founded in 2012. We've been the first to market to bring an automated standardized imaging solution for your skin. Uh, we're classified FDA class one device. We've completed extensive beta testing at large institutions such as Mayo Clinic, Walter Reed, Oregon Health and Science University. And we, we're really excited about this product because it really empowers physicians and patients with a consistent whole body skin data so they can track their skin over time. And we're gonna discuss a little bit about the revenue generator here. Great, thank you. So the next time you drive or walk to your office, count the number of similar practitioners that you pass. Think about the anonymous white plastic signs with block lettering and ask yourself, how many doctors do my patients walk or drive past just to see me? It's a sobering question, but one that you really should think about every day if you wanna get more patients. Your brand is not a logo or a tagline. It's the sum total of your patient's experiences. And there's a big difference between what you think patients want and what patients actually want from a provider. You want patients to see you as a caring, accomplished, successful provider. In your mind, that's a degree from a prestigious medical school, years of training and certification, published papers, membership in professional societies, specialized equipment or procedures, peer referrals, community involvement, community activities. However, patients don't necessarily see or appreciate all that. They make judgments about a few other things, an entirely different list. Do you have an attractive office and a friendly, efficient staff? Does your website look good? And does it actually load on their phone without squinting? Do you have a consistent looking name and address and phone number on the internet? Or at least do you give the impression that you're not out of business? And most important, Lots of positive online reviews, especially good Yelp or Google reviews, and authentic testimonials and before and after photos. The sum total of both lists, yours and your patients, is your reputation or your brand. It's what the world thinks of you, and it's magnified and amplified by the machine called the internet. So the easiest way to distinguish yourself online is to enhance your search profile. Think about the first page of search results when patients Google you by name. When a prospective new patient gets your name from a family member, friend, or another provider, or an insurance company, they don't just call anymore. They check you out online. According to the most recent studies, more than 75% of patients do this routinely before they call. And if they don't like what they see, they never will. At this point, your brand or online reputation is about consistency and professionalism. Patients are making subtle judgments about what they see when they search. Is your name, phone number, and address clear and consistent? Is the same name on each listing? Or are there signs of, are there signs of neglect, like your first and last name is transposed? Or maybe a doctor that retired two years ago is listed. Are you listed on the top healthcare sites? What do those listings look like? 
Do those listings look claimed and cared for, or are they neglected and empty? Is there a picture of you or a sil silhouette of a doctor? Do you have any reviews? Are they any good? Are they fresh? Are you on social media? How many likes or followers do you have? Then there are some technical issues about your website that really turn people off. For instance, can they even read your website on their mobile phone? Do the pages work or are there a lot of broken pages? Does the site take forever to load, like one or two seconds forever? When names and addresses are mixed up and out of date, that impacts a patient's impression of you. It makes you look inattentive and not detailed oriented. When your website doesn't load or when you have no social media presence or no followers, you look out of touch or even worse. But when your information is well organized, up to date and authoritative, it sends the right brand message. Now, if this sounds a little bit complicated, uh, it, it, frankly it is. Uh, but fortunately, doctor.com has a tool that quickly analyzes all major healthcare and local business directory websites to show you how your practice appears to the major search engines. And if you shoot me a quick email or post a request in the chat window, I will set you up with a free, no obligation review of your practice's appearance on more than 60 different web directory and review sites. Okay, so let's talk about reviews. Reviews are the single most important factor in determining your online reputation. Great reviews are the best way to stand out in your community among your competitors. And so here's some insights that I think will be very eye-opening about the whole process of online reviews. So there was a recent survey of um, patients, about 380 patients that was done three years ago. It shows the opinions about online reviews and, and specifically what we all wanna know is how many reviews are enough. So first, when evaluating a doctor based on online reviews, the survey asked, what is the minimum number of reviews needed before you consider the rating to be credible? And two thirds of patients think that 10 reviews is sufficient to get a credible representation of your online reputation. And next, how many stars is enough? And you see here that you need a minimum, a minimum of four stars or more before anyone will call. So if you're looking at the first two sides, you might say, great, I have 20 online reviews and most of them are four stars, so I guess I'm done. And not quite. If a review is six months old, 25% of respondents feel that it has lost credibility. And by 12 months, that number has grown to 75%. So the key takeaway, online reviews aren't a problem that can be solved with a one-time effort. To achieve a winning online reputation, you need to take steps to ensure that new reviews are continuously added. And finally, the survey asked, how many bad reviews are too many? So if you get 19 good reviews and one or two bad reviews, more than half of patients still may not call. We tell clients that the occasional bad review is not fatal though. Most patients are open-minded and they see a fluky review, they just kind of dismiss it. The occasional bad review helps the process look objective and honest. You can't please anyone. And certainly having one bad review in the entire process makes the other 19 look kind of legit and, and reasonable. But we also warn patients, uh, we all warn our clients not to let bad reviews define a trend and certainly do not let them go unanswered. You need to pursue bad reviews with a savvy combination of personal outreach, public outreach, and if necessary, appeals to the publisher for legitimate violations of the publisher standards. And although it's tempting, avoid calling your lawyer. Such a tactic rarely works. So here's some ways uh, that we have found that are very effective to get more reviews and to get more positive reviews. Well, first, train your staff to ask patients about their online behaviors before and after the visit. Does that patient have a Google account? Do they even know what a Google account is? Are they on Yelp? If the patient seems digitally savvy and happy with the visit, hit them up for a review. And be sure to give incentives to your staff to ask. Follow up with an email to patients after every visit. Make sure to put links directly in the body of the email, maybe in the signature or in the footer, so that the patient can find the exact place where they can leave a review for the doctor. Some practices print up posters with a QR barcode that links to a review site. In theory, a patient can scan the QR code from a smartphone and complete the review. In practice, patients are pretty busy and not everyone knows what a QR code is, but patients you know, generally have good intentions it's just that life gets in the way and they find it's just you know, not, not something that they're willing to do on a consistent basis. So that's one of the reasons why we developed the Review Hub. 
And this is an in-office review collection laptop. Uh, it makes it much easier and very quick and fast for the patient to leave you a review. Uh, it's an easy to use laptop based on the Chrome operating system. It's designed only to collect reviews from patients. They can't surf the internet, they can't do anything else except leave your practice a review. And all the collected reviews are then moderated by a human being for quality and then published across our entire content network. And here's an interesting statistic about some, some of the things we found. We're finding that practices using the review hub are getting eight times more reviews than practices that do not have a review hub. This is based on our actual data of the number of reviews that, that practices are getting that are listed on doctor.com. Okay, so let me quickly summarize some of the points about standing out from your competitors. First, make sure that you have clean, up-to-date online citations, reviews, and positive social media interactions to provide important signals to new patients. You stand out because you simply look better online than everyone else in your building or in your neighborhood. Your name and address should be consistent on all sites. Your practice information should be rich and filled with content. Your reputation is consistently mentioned across all directory sites. You should have great reviews so that you can also stand out. Getting more reviews is a process that can and should be managed. You should strive for recency and freshness in your reviews. Work to get good ratings by understanding that it's about the entire consumer experience, not just the medicine. And deploy technology solutions that make it easy for patients to leave you great reviews. So now I'd like to hand the microphone over to Carlene, who's going to talk specifically about an innovative imaging technology that can really help differentiate your practice online. Thank you, David. I'm going to step right into uh, discussing Derm Spectra. First, we're going to discuss the gap in, in technology that Derm Spectra is in, uh, in terms of the future of your skin health. So if you look at the current situation today on how the human skin is documented or tracked over time, is a very fragmented situation. Uh, some folks in the high-risk categories may use medical photography if they can find it. Other uh, practices use text or even handwritten diagrams to try to track lesions on skin over time. And even the medical photography, there's a, lot, a lack of a standardization in those poses is difficult to compare them over time. The storage issues are it's difficult um, from a database perspective uh, to have the same images that were collected at the same conditions like lighting and distance and resolution. We've also offered a privacy booth. Um, currently, if photography is taken, usually the, the patient stands out um, in an open area, which is a little bit uncomfortable. In addition to, uh, we've added in a, a secure database and a viewing application that then helps organize the images um, as you move forward. So when you want to look at your images, instead of looking at a, an album full of images, you could have a, an application on an iPad that actually lets you view the images. From a problem perspective, uh, with the growing skin cancers, over 6 million annually diagnosed in the U.S., um, $8 billion annually spent normally in the later stage of skin cancers as they're detected. Uh, 75,000 new cases of melanoma a year. It is the uh, highest mortality rate of the skin cancers with over 9,000 deaths a year. The fact that we're gonna offer this technology to offer total body skin imaging um, will just help patients track their skin over time, detect any kind of changes in your lesions earlier to help determine what, if anything, uh, you can track those lesions earlier or have biopsies. So what Derm Spectra has done is we've, we've taken some technology and we've just really injected into this problem into automated total body photography. So we developed a booth that has nine stationary cameras, an image management system that's secure for those images, and a viewing application. And we actually have run a number of tests called Know the Skin You're In, where we've had a lot of patients just interested in having the skin scans done for their own use. And so that's another potential revenue generator is that patients are interested in tracking this on their own as well. And so copies of these images can be given uh, to your patients. Again, we're just adding technology into the system that is currently today a, a medical photographer um, that would come to your practice and take images. Instead, we're offering a photo booth um, that is standardized, high resolution. They're 36.3 megapixel pictures. The imaging itself takes about 10 minutes. There's seven body poses that the patient moves into through a, a instructional video that plays inside the booth. 
it's a small booth. It's a five by five footprint. Uh, again, there's secure viewing on an iPad or PC that you can now look at those images. You can annotate them. You can add notes to them. And then you can also save it as a PDF report that you would attach to your medical record. So you would have a, a report of your review of those skin images. Um, it can also be used for teledermatology. If you want to collect these images at another site and then review them later at your practice, it's a, it's a way uh, that a, a lot of people look to extend capability out into remote areas where you can collect full body skin imaging. As part of our beta testing, we did a lot of uh, surveying of patients. So what I'm going to present here is some survey results from our Mayo Clinic studies that we did. And what we did uh, with the we really looked at the patients and their attitude toward the technology, and especially from an image acquisition perspective. We saw very high levels of satisfied patients. And I'm going to show you on the next slide the, the types of questions that we asked the patients. Uh, we asked some pre and post imaging questions on um, what they thought about the imaging technology. So the types of questions, you know, we asked them about was the process, the ability to move in and out of the booth. Did they like the instructional video? Were the poses easy to get into? What did you think about the time it took to acquire these images? Did you feel like the booth was confining or anything thing was embarrassing or uncomfortable about it? So we asked those kind of questions as well as do, doing human factor studies uh, when we originally designed the booth, because we were trying to make it as accessible and available to as many patients as possible to collect something as simple as standardized high resolution imaging of the skin. So these were, again, results that came out of our Mayo Clinic study. And from a digital skin imaging perspective, we were asking, you know, from overall experience, from everything from checking in to getting your images collected to getting a copy of your images, how happy were you or how satisfied you were with the process? And these are the kind of results we're seeing from the patients. Again, this is just a question that we asked on, so this was the one time you you were able to collect images, how likely will you be to continue this process? And depending on their risk factors and family history of skin cancers, imaging could be recommended at six month intervals, one year intervals, two year intervals. And how likely will you continue to collect these images so we can compare them over time? And so we also got a very high response rate that um, patients were likely to continue this process. So this is not a one-time service that a practice could offer a patient. It would be a service where over time they could keep collecting these images and then have these to detect any small changes in the lesions like size, color, shape. Now, on this slide, I just want to talk to you a little bit about a private practice case study in New York City where we have installed a unit now for over a year. And this is our first private practice study uh, we've done a lot of the other studies at larger institutions um, where patients have also had their imaging. But this is uh, from Dr. Mitchell Klein. Uh, he's in New York. This was a, a three-year lease that we set up with him, which had a ramp-up period, uh, we, which were very flexible on the lease as you're trying to get your patient population to begin to, to um, do baseline scans. So we're, we're pretty flexible on the lease. So Dr. Klein looked at his patient population and signed up for 60 scans a month. And based on his demographic, he is charging a $500 fee per scan. And the kind of revenue he's generating is over $30,000 a month. And that's a minimum 60. He's done over 100 on some months. So after you take out the lease costs and all his other costs to have the unit in his office, and we actually fit it in a very small space in his office. It was actually an ex-utility closet. So it did not take up an exam room in his office. And so he's actually doing a nice net revenue generation. And from his perspective, his patients say, you know, when they're asked if they would like to have a baseline skin scan, most of them say, yes, why wouldn't I do this? It's a common sense thing to do to document your skin and, and track it in a consistent way. So I think right now we're going to just show a, a short video clip from Dr. Klein himself and that will be the end of my presentation. I'm Dr. Mitchell Klein, Clinical Assistant Professor of Dermatology at Weill New York Presbyterian Medical Center in practice here in New York City. And today I'm going to speak to you about derm spectra. Derm spectra is really important in the field of dermatology. When we're looking at patient's skin, we're looking at spots, we're making an evaluation at one point in time.
when we look on derm spectra, we're looking at total body photography serially. That means that we're looking at spots that change or spots that are new. It's not possible to figure out what spots are changed and what spots are new unless we have serial photographs. And the 360 degree images that we have in very high resolution with this device help us to find those things. That's how we are better able to diagnose skin cancer and melanoma. Unlike our volunteer KJ, patients can discreetly undress before they start the screening. Patients may choose to wear more or less clothing depending upon their comfort level, but in general, it's advisable to wear as little clothing as possible so that all the skin can be imaged. Patients will then, in the booth, go into a series of poses following the instructions played by the Derm Spectra video and the speaker that plays inside of that booth. These poses allow us to view all areas of the skin from different angles on a consistent basis. This makes for comparison from past and present. After the images are taken, we review them on the iPad and we can compare images side by side to al analyze change. So who needs derm spectra? The answer is a patient who has a family history of melanoma, a family history of skin cancer, a personal history of melanoma, atypical moles or irregular moles, or many moles, or a patient who is just extremely concerned about having their skin followed in the optimal high-tech way that we can do in the 21st century. So we'd be thrilled to have you in Klein Dermatology to show you Derm Spectra. We look forward to sharing this technology with you. All right, I think we're just gonna go into a Q&A. Anything else we're looking at? Okay, good. Great, I'm gonna switch back to the, so we can read the chat window. Okay, so we, we wanna have a couple of questions here. Let's start talking a little bit more. There were some questions that people had about the medical technology. And I think when you look at that video, what's really telling is that that's the doctor doing that on his own. Uh, that wasn't a, a company sponsored video. That was the doctor taking his own volition and saying, this makes me different. This is something that's gonna be really, really attractive. Uh, we deal with um, a, uh, a dental implant specialist who did extensive research and is one of the few people uh, in his area that has a uh, full, like a 360 degree um, x-ray scanner for accurate placement of uh, dental implants. And it makes him stand out a little bit. He does extensive marketing on his website to sell that medical device and that difference. He also works with the manufacturer to make sure that he's prominently featured in PR when they're doing their own kind of features there. But it, it helps brand his practice as being the, the only one in the area that has that. And you, know, you see this a lot with people who are in like cosmetic dentistry or, or orthodontia doing uh, premier status uh, for Invisalign or something like that one. It's, it's leveraging the brand power of the devices and the, the branded devices, the branded procedures, and then exploiting that for your own, your own benefit uh, inside your practice. So even though we, I know we have some people on the call that are dentists and a lot of different specialties, but the, the principle is look at the, the resources that you have and how you can use those to make you a very distinctive, different practice than all the other guys on your street or in your building. Uh, remember, it's, you know, people are walking by and you, you want to make sure that they, they don't stop themselves going to you for a reason. Uh, so there's a notion about the review hub and um, uh, it's, a device that is by us, so it's it's a uh, it's the Google Chrome operating system. Uh, but that's the only real connection to Google. Uh, there's no, uh, uh, it's just a um, basically it's it's a light client is what they call it. So it only works on uh, wireless or network. Program that with a series of very specific questionnaires, and it is uh, locked to your practice. So the first screen is, can I you know, would you like to rate Dr. Joan Smith today? And every question is relevant just to your practice. Uh, a series of, of a few different questions. And at the end, the, um, the, the review is then sent to our 
uh, human, uh, we have a, a series of editors that review each review to make sure that uh, there's no inappropriate language, to make sure that there's no uh, inadvertent um, uh, disclosure of confidential health information, but we try to keep it, keep it real clean and authentic. After it passes human review, it gets syndicated out to about, uh, I think the, the latest number is 12 different uh, review sites, uh, but the network is constantly growing and it, it's, uh, it's a great way to get positive reviews out to a range of different um, uh, websites that your patients are seeing, uh, including your own, by the way. So we have code that can take those reviews, turn that around, and then place that as a feed on your actual web page. Okay, uh, so here's another question. Do I need to ask clients to sign a permission form or legal release when they leave a review? Well, not a lawyer. I'm not going to give legal advice, but I can say most of the time uh, a review is run by a publisher, third-party uh, entity, and so there's some terms of use and things like that. Uh, when someone leaves a review with the Review Hub, they have to accept the doctor.com uh, terms of use. And I'm sure Yelp and, and uh, Google have their own terms of use before you can just publish anything on there. A testimonial, though, is probably something you do want to talk to your lawyer about and maybe draft up a simple uh, kind of form. And that would obviously hold true, I think, for like uh, before and after photos and things like that. That's where you're the publisher. You're controlling the content. And so it, it might make more sense to protect yourself uh, on something like that. Carlene, with, with your um, customers, do you like getting permission for that case study, is that something you work with the doctor on? Yeah, for instance, a lot of our doctors do have uh, patients sign permission or uh, I guess release forms uh, for the imaging uh, because also other folks, um, depending on uh, what they want to do with it, if they want to uh, get involved in a clinical study, because uh, we have some of those going on as well, um, they can also you know, um, become involved in clinical studies so the patients would give release to have some of their images used in those studies. Great, great. So someone else was asking, why should a receptionist ask if someone's on Yelp? That's an interesting question. All right. So when you ask if someone's a Yelper, you're clearing out two or three different questions at once. If they say, what's a Yelp? Then you probably know they're not that savvy and they're probably not going to then understand how to leave a review on Yelp. If they are a Yelper, then those people tend to stand out on the Yelp platform. Uh, Yelp does an excellent job of tracking down the authenticity of reviews and making sure that reviews are fair and honest. So if you find someone that is actively engaged on Yelp and they seem really happy with the services of the doctor, that would be someone you want to strongly encourage getting a review from. And stress how it, you know, it helps grow your practice. It helps really make you stand out. You just want to be, you want to say, give you, you want to say, give us a good review because that, that's sort of like unfair. Uh, give us a fair and honest review. About the only thing you can do there is just make sure that they're happy and make sure that they're someone that had a good time and, and maybe has the free time to do that. But uh, identifying people who are, who are on Google kind of pre-selects people uh, that they understand the process, they understand how to log in, they understand the account, and, and that can really help boost your scores on those two things. So we always, the subtle little things like that, just it helps identify those people. The Review Hub is sort of like a, um, it, it's sort of a bridge. Uh, it gets over the, uh, uh, what people are, are best intentions, you know, people are, are too busy or they don't want to fumble around with their phone or, you know, they, they ignore your emails. But if you ask them front and center and you put the device right in front of them, very few people will turn you down. They, they might feign, well, we're, I'm just too busy or something like that, but that's probably someone that maybe wasn't going to give you a good review anyway. But if they say, wow, thank you very much, you, you've kind of broken the ice for them and you've kind of nudged them over uh, the, the, into doing something for you that they maybe would have if they just had the opportunity. That, that's kind of what we try to do with this device is make it just a little bit easier for those people that want to give you a good review, make it a lot easier for them to do that. Okay. Any other comments or any other things? Uh... Great. I think uh, we won't get into trouble if we end a little bit early here. I want to thank you everyone for attending. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions uh, or if you would like to get that uh, free directory scan, uh, send me an email, davidb at corp, C-O-R-P dot doctor dot com. And uh, if you'd like to get in touch with Carlene, what's your contact? Uh, my contact information is uh, kgsebold at germspector.com. Also, uh, you can go to our website, uh, www.germspector.com. 
Great. Thank you, everyone. Uh, look for our emails uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, and we'll uh, probably have another uh, webinar on a different topic uh, the third or fourth week of March. Again, thanks very much. Have a great weekend.